Hey everyone, this week these big boys are really up against the clock. They want to attend a festival in Belgium, but they left it too late to buy tickets. Never ones to miss out, they set off on the 8 hour drive from Leeds to Belgium. They have no festival tickets, no place to stay, and no way of crossing the border. Let's join them on this brilliantly stupid journey. That's about it, see ya. Good evening everyone, we are on the way, perhaps, to Belgium. We don't know yet, we're off to Rockwurcher, maybe. We hope, we really do hope, because it looks amazing. But we're in a bit of a weird situation, let's explain. So why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? The lineup to this festival is so blisteringly good, we can't even risk missing it. But we needed to set off today. So we've got three areas of responsibility. Right, Dan, Yo. your responsibility is finding us somewhere to stay tonight. Stay on your nails. And getting us booked on the Euro Tunnel. Your job is to find us four tickets for this event. It's, it's sold, sold out. out event. Do what you can. Go on Twitter. Figure that out, okay? Your job is to drive yeah. us eight yeah. hours to the festival site. Yep. It's a little awkward because if we book the hotel and then we don't have the tickets, we've wasted the money on that. If we get the tickets and can't find a hotel, then we're fucked there. Right, we've got our coffees. We've got our Rock Worcher playlist on for general admission with camping as well. The festival's tomorrow, right? Yeah. Never ones to back down from a challenge. We were feeling all right. Dan was ringing some hotels and none of them were answering, which was a bit annoying, but we were still kind of confident, like, it's not the first time we've done something this stupid and it certainly won't be the last. So we kind of felt secure that we'd find something by the end of the trip. Right, so I'm hitting some stumbling blocks here. Um, it's quite late at night and no one's answering the phone, so can't check if their reception's open. Um, and if they're not answering phones, I'm guessing the reception ain't open anyway. So, don't know where we're gonna stay. I'm now getting a bit worried about this. And I hate talking to robots on the phone. Fuck you, just put me a through to a person. You're gonna have to do like Twitter or Ticketmaster official resale or message one of bands that's on and ask if we can go on guest list. Why don't you have a look on the Rockwork to Reddit and see what ticket reseller they recommend? It seems everyone's saying to use either a site called Ticket Swap, which I'll check out now, or Ticketmaster. Right, because it's like half eight at night, having a struggle finding out if places check in at half eleven when we get there. Nobody's answering phones. It's not looking likely that we're gonna find somewhere to stay. Shite. Folkestone is small apparently. It's looking like we're just gonna have to see what's open when we arrive and go to the first place we can find, which is shit. We've stopped off for a little break, and in that time I've managed to go onto that ticket swap website thing and bag two tickets. Now, there's four of us, so 50% of us are A-OK -okay with- Bags again, one. But bags of me as well. Me and Dan are definitely going to Rock Worcher Festival. Oh, God help the viewers. Imagine that if it was just you two. Fucking hell, that'd be the blind leading the blind. The annoying thing is, still got to get two more. We were unsure whether to get the Channel Tunnel tonight or stay in England and get the Channel Tunnel in the morning. And we were quickly swayed when we saw that it cost about 300 quid more to get it on this night. We determined that we needed to stay somewhere in Folkestone. And thankfully, Dan actually, for once in his life, pulled a blinder. This is one of the places I saw online that wouldn't answer the fucking phone for some unknown reason. The lights are on, so that's a good sign. So we're just gonna check it out. Hopefully they've got, you know, space or something. Great news. They have got space for us. Um, I've never checked into a hotel after midnight. It's just gone midnight, but they've got a spot for us. Pretty happy with that. Big up. Well done. Dan picked a good one. When I say I'm tired, what I mean by that is I had a nap in the van, which means we still only have two tickets and we're at the festival tomorrow. I've sorted hotel out. Why don't you sort it out? I've sorted 50% of the work. Never a dull moment on this channel. Good night. Good night, Raz. Good night. The best way I can describe this place is if the Phoenix Club made a hotel as well. It's got cabaret shows downstairs and it's all just very early 2000s, late 90s. It's just a little bit... We are literally now the day of the festival and still don't have tickets. Hopefully, once we get on the Eurostar, something will come up. What's gonna be really annoying about this, if we don't get the tickets, is we're then in France. I, mean, I don't need to tell you how boring France is. Aside from getting a McBaguette for breakfast, 
I'm not feeling too on top of the world. So we set off to the Yoro Star or the Yoro Tunnel or whatever they call it now. I think it's called Le Chatel, which is very fancy. And um, you know what? It was bringing back memories of the times when we went around Europe in the RV, which is really nice because we'll probably never do that again. And we hold those memories very fondly. Something really cool is it was actually the first day of the Le Mans 24 hour. So there was loads of cool cars coming in with us. And it was like being on a car show when we get on the tunnel. Me and Dan literally walking up and down the train looking at all these nice Porsches and stuff. It was great. Cars we, get my dick hard. We came through on the day of Le Mans, so there's been some very nice cars to look at. Jake, are we getting on? Once we've got through this tunnel, I'm gonna get those tickets so quick. I, if you got posy vibes, then it's all gonna be fine. I'm not anxious whatsoever, I promise. Good. <laughs> Dan's job has been done. He's done his job. Well done, Dan. We had a nice sleep last night. Jake Barley's job yet to be completed, Jake. We're missing two tickets and a car parking pass and a camping pass. So I've made it onto the Belgium Ticketmaster website finally. So we need two more. The issue is I'm having to do all this, like, it's all in Belgian. Okay, so I've got, right, I've got one ticket plus Tim. parking, right? Excellent. Right, hold on. We had two tickets yesterday. Yeah, right. so we've got one more now. Right, hold on. Right, has anyone got a card? Yes! Yeah! yeah! Woo! -hoo! I'm going, Dan's going, us three are all Yes, the three Woo best friends that anyone could have. So at this point, we know for a fact that we're going to be going to this festival, but it's just how are we actually going to do it. Without this last ticket, we are aware that we can do a dodgy wristband swap just to get in through the gates, and we're all going to still have a good time. The issue with doing that when you're in our situation is it's all fun and games to do that, but you're effectively going to burn your bridge with that festival, and we would love to come back to Rotwurcher. So if we were being shady, we probably wouldn't get a chance to come back. All right, we've arrived at the car parking site, which I think is a half an hour walk. Ah, well done, Raz. Thank you. How was that? Oh, it was fine. Any joy? So I've spoken to this person on Twitter and I've done the whole like, move the conversation over to Instagram. All looks pretty good. If we're happy boys, I can get one cheaper for only 200 euro. Yeah, why not eh? We, yeah, we're here now. One. We might as well. <laughs> yeah, do you know what? We're literally here. We don't have, so. a, we don't have a choice. Right. PayPal. Do PayPal goods and services. Yeah, yeah, well done for that, Jake. I know that was a big job. God, that was really stressful. As an intern, so you've really... To a different country without tickets to a festival. I've had to run back to the van because we forgot the most important festival ingredient of them all. Oh, a bottle of water to stay hydrated. The money has gone through. I've sent the 200 euros, whatever it was. Fingers crossed the ticket comes through because God, it's going to be annoying if it doesn't. So we're camping in this place called C3, which is the only place that was left. So wish us luck. You boys never guess what. What? Just as we've got here. Yeah. Tickets just landed. Oh, brilliant. Get in. Let's have a look. Your screen's off. Oh. <laughs> it works. Oh, that's just for the camping, though. Here we are, mate. We made it. Last minute. Yeah, it's quite busy in here. While these slow coaches get ready, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this lineup. It is one of the most ridiculous, brilliant lineups I've ever seen for a festival. This weekend, we're going to see 11 headliner class UK acts. Acts that would headline Reading and Leeds in the UK. That's what I'm basing that off. So come with us as we have a riot. The first one's on in about three hours, and I think you might know them. What a ropey looking camp. These things have paid for themselves. That's been less than £10 a go now. One of the first things we've noticed at this festival is everybody rides bikes. I know Beijing has loads, but I think this place could give it a run for its money. There's loads of them. I tell you, I'm desperate for a drink. Yeah, get me a beer. God, I'm so thirsty. Thirsty for someone to press like. First beer of the festival. Not really in the Not festival in the yet. Festival yet. Look, it doesn't really matter. Oh, rock works for Bicky. What? A fuck Bambino Bicky. Looking at it for the first time, We've done a really good job at presenting this before I've been walked in. With the whole walk all the way down with all the different food vendors and like bars, it really like sets you up for a good mood. And then when you get here as well, this is great. Moment of truth. 
Will these tickets that I bought within the last 24 hours work? I'm not nervous. Don't be then. But this is a bit. <laughs> It'll be all right. I've got hope in these. No one would do us over. All right, we made it in about the space of 10 or 11 hours from having no tickets to being stood on site and hopefully this inspires some of you lot to be spontaneous nothing in this world beats spontaneity in my opinion and it didn't work when we went to manchester gorilla but we still had fun and it did work for this so take a risk and go on a road trip with your pals now let's see 11 headliners they only do beer in halves and i don't know why very weird like a lot of European festivals, this place uses a cashless RFID wristband system, but there's a twist. Rather than literally just topping it up and making it as simple as can be with the tags, you have to top it up in credits. So literally you've got no fucking idea how much you're spending. 15 is 52 euros 50. But then when you go to get a beer, it's gonna be like, oh, that's however many credits. How much is a beer? Is that one credit and is one meal one credit or is like some chips two credits? Everyone has a mobile phone with contactless on it. Just fucking use that. Right, so our daily budget for festivals is always 50 pounds and that gets us 15, they're, called, they're not called credits, they're called coins. So let's go see how much a beer is. Drink. As shit as this system is, on the app you can still see your uh, coin allowance. So it's much better than Rockham's one. So it's kind of all right, but still shit. I've got some great news and some not so great news. A beer is only one credit, which means we've got 15 beers. The bad news is this is the size of the beer. That means this is 3.50. Three euros fifty. That means a pint seven euro. It's probably about six pound fifty, which same as rock am in it. Like it's a, not a bad price. Some of you still haven't listened to our hit single Death Express, so I'm just gonna play the main riff for you now. <laughs> So you can stream that now on all major platforms. It is true what they say, if you want a good festival, bring you the containers. You need shipping containers. Shipping containers. shipping containers and rocking the name and Correct. it's guaranteed yeah. to be a good He's festival. Right as well. Yeah. I'm not, hey, do you know what? I can't take credit for that. Raz said it. Yeah. You better believe when TPD Fest happens, we're going to have rocking the name and shipping containers. Hey, I tell you what, I tell you what, that banner up there, doesn't do much, but the sign's a big plus. Doesn't do much. What would you want it to This is a rosé beer. It's got no rosé in it. It's just fruity. It's like for people who like fruity ciders, but they've got no cider. Well, so. thankfully, I've got one too, mate. Yay! I don't even think we're an hour into this festival yet. And the vibes are that good that... I think this is fucking sick. So we're in like the equivalent of like the snake pit or the golden circle. Look how close we are. You can't really tell. Danny will show you, he's better at filming. Let me tell you a story. I parked up the van maybe two hours ago and since then we've set up camp and we're literally at the front of the stage here. Here we go. Headliner number one. You already know who it is. We're not gonna introduce them. They're not headlining big nose. No, but we're talking about who is a British UK headliner. One thing I've never seen before is the sound tech getting their own screen. Well, I'm used to that being the end of the fucking night, but Jesus Christ, that was a blinding set. No other sound, no robbers, no two time, no bullshit. There was a lass with earplugs in who had to keep pushing them further into her ears because we were screaming so loud. That was great. That was good. What that, a, great that a great start. Set. That was a great set, wasn't it? First band we've seen, headliner. So when you collect these cups and you hand them in, you get a token or some form of credit back. I've got 15 here, so let's find out how much I get back and if I can have another drink with them. And with those 15, I've now got half a pint, bitch! This one's free for me. So much like Mary, I forgot to bring my sunglasses. I don't really need them right now, but I'll need them over the weekend. And they've got some on the official merch stand, 15 euros. 
Wow. Not too bad, I suppose. How do you know? I'm just guessing. It's a deep dish. It was two credits, which is... I can't remember how much it was, but it looks all right, to be fair. Don't know if this is going to fill me up, so I might get some chippies soon. Watch this space. He's just pretty wank, I'm not going to lie. It's too airy. I'm definitely going to get some chips with this. We just got the Durham Kebab. Same as any other Durham Kebab. It was fucking brilliant. Great taste, great spice. 4.2 credits, whatever the fuck that means. That's a bit weird. The pasta bolognese, it's a little bit watery, but it's still got a nice bit of flavouring. And there's plenty of it, so I know it's going to fill me up. And that's what I need, because I'm hungry. But you know what? Great. Loved it. Here's our second UK headliner of the last 90 minutes. Sam Fender. Now, I don't have much to say about Sam. I think generally he's pretty boring, but he seems like a nice guy and he does have a couple of bangers. He's headlining Leeds Fest, so we're going to give it our all and we're going to try and enjoy this as much as we can. As you can tell, the boys are fucking loving Sam Fender. Yeah, great choice, Leeds Fest. I've realised why I don't gel with Sam Fender, and it's because the songs don't go anywhere. But they also start in the middle and end in the middle. I'm all for a slow song that stays slow, and I'm all for a, a high song that stays high, and I'm all for either of those that change their pace as they go. But Sam Fender is very middle, mid tempo, mid rhythm, like everything's like mid. I'll tell you what, Royal Blood ain't so bad. We were so bored then. We forgot a song was playing until someone cheered. I've worked it all out. Sam Fender is fine. He is the typical Wetherspoon 6 out of 10. So I'm cold because I'm just wearing a t-shirt, so I've got a couple of choices. Choice number one, buy some merch for 60 quid, a hoodie to keep me warm. Choice number two, buy a glass of wine to fuck me so hard that I don't even know what planet I'm on. Write down in the comments which one you think I'm gonna choose. Cheers everyone, we're having a great time at the Workshop Fest. The thing about trans women in sports is... I don't understand why Festival Republic didn't just save some fucking money and book Sam Squire instead. They're just as good and a lot cheaper. That's the joke. Sam Yamaha Pacifica. Ooh, the Pacifica. That's a good one though, that's the a good one. Yamaha Pacifica is a great guitar. These are a band called the Waytons from Sheffield who are good, but they are like when we're trying to take the piss out of like a genre and we just take everything that makes that genre, this is what they do for a living and they do a really good job at it. They, uh, they that, was, that was a compliment. <laughs> that was a compliment. It did sound like it. <laughs> Right well, I've never listened to him. So I'm at the bar, I got my glass of wine, a little girl over there, she's feeling fine, but I just got paid, I won't get laid, but that don't matter, cause I'm alright, I'm feeling alright tonight, everybody, yeah. Just there, squeezing at a festival. We're at a rock festival, squeezing lemon onto onto a plate of oysters, whilst wearing his jumper like wrapped around his his collar, with in a little bow. And Sap Fender were just saying, "Fuck the Tories." We're leaving the wine bar. I've had two glasses of wine, so you might see me on the floor. We're off to see our third headliner of the day, and this guy is fucking brilliant. So let's go see if we can get nice and close for him. Watch how easy it is for us to get to the front. Watch. There we are, we're at the front. That wasn't hard, was it? Heavens have opened. It's starting to rain, which is bad news for a man whose favourite band is on later on this evening as another headliner. Heavy is the head that wears the heart. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh,
since 21. Girl, I need that gently one. Yeah, that savage and friendly one. Ad time. Folks, you know that we've done a lot of walking this year at all these festivals, and I've never had particularly supportive footwear. So I'm really pleased to tell you that this video is sponsored by our friends at Vessi. Vessi make loads of lightweight, comfort, everyday shoes, and they're 100% waterproof as well, which means your socks are always going to stay dry if you're in a field with some wet grass. Unlike most other shoes, the material stretches four ways, which means that they just fit like a sock and it feels like you're walking on air. I actually tried these on for the first time today because we just got back and they're absolutely brilliant i don't tie my laces anyway so it's super convenient that you can just pull these on using the little thing at the back and they just go on like a sock it is awesome they use a technology called dimatex which means that your feet can keep breathing but no water's getting in it's like on the high-end coats that people use for mountaineering and stuff lets you breathe doesn't let any liquid in very very cool they're also super versatile which means that they're on call for anything that life throws your way We've got a video coming up soon where we're going to a country that is uh, quite dusty and sometimes quite wet as well. So I'm going to be rocking the vests and I'm really, really glad about it because I literally feel like I'm walking on air. So trust me, go to vessi.com slash tpdtv and check out the range. There's loads of different styles, so I'm sure you'll find something that gels with what you normally wear. And don't forget to use the code tpdtv to get an extra 15% off. Thank you, Vessi, so much for sponsoring this video and for kitting us all out with some lovely shoes. That code one more time, TPDTV. Vessi.com slash TPDTV. Go on it now. Thanks. Back to the video. Adova. They're not letting me, man, but I love you guys so much. Thank you for an amazing show. I remember when Storms got announced as a Glasgow headline, I was very cynical. And then Storms was announced as a Reading and Leeds headline, I was very cynical. He did a great job at Reading and Leeds. He's done a great job tonight. What a nice, humble, hard-working individual. Big up to Big Michael. So we're here wishing we had some, for, you know, a poncho or something like that. And these guys have gone to the next level by just getting a big piece of tarp and put it all over themselves. <laughs> Some of the cheeky cunts in there have ponchos as well. Everything I said, I take back. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, you're in here as well. <laughs> I'm you to come in. We're just chilling, man. What's good? We can't get a drink in here, though, can we? Yeah, you can if you just clean your head out. Why are you filming me filming you? Because it's good to get the double angle sometimes. Oh, it looked good on the thingy video. No, double angles, not ugly angles. Oh, shit. <laughs> I see the stars come out tonight under a bright Hello, get out of the bar. Great banner. Take can I have a beer, please? Said it's two minimum. He was taking the piss. I thought it was being serious. Great banner. I respect you, Belgium. We've got a glass of wine again. Third glass of wine in one day. Eh? I'm going to need that to get through the next Reading and Leeds headliner. Also, this band headline Electric Picnic. So we're surrounded by this is picture this. Who's that? Post Malone. Who's in the picture? Post Malone. Who's Post Malone posing next to? Fuck knows. <laughs> who is it? What, did, what right. did Dan just say? He do not know who that is. Write down in the comments who that is and teach Dan a lesson. This is a rare moment where we get to watch, or let me rephrase, where I get to watch one of my best friends watch one of their favourite bands. And it's not a band I like. Normally, everyone's traipsing around, accommodating me, watching a band that I love and I'm looking forward this evening to just watching Jake Valley have a great time um, that's what it's all about it cold I'm in shorts and a t-shirt if only you could have known that it was gonna rain then you couldn't have worn the shorts the weather app said it won't gonna rain where'd you get your shorts from shop <laughs>
Right, Mumford and Sons actually really fucking good, but because of the rain and the cold, and I'm wearing just a shorts and t-shirt, my body is just seizing up. My back is killing me. So I'm off back to bed because I want to warm up. <laughs> Well, guess what? I left early. And it's because I'm soaking wet through, my back is killing me, and I've had a real long day. This is an amazing festival, it's beautiful, great bands, like it's been non stop bangers all fucking day. We've had a fantastic fucking day at the Rock Workshop Festival. What a fucking riot it has been. Every band we've seen has been great. And guess what? More to come tomorrow. But now I'm gonna get really cold as we walk back to the camp. To say we stood here a few hours ago and didn't even know if we were gonna get in. In it. That was a brilliant day. I don't know it was hard, but why were people selling tickets to this like that already had tickets? Why would you not come to this? The fine popping off. I thought we had no nightlife in here. This is the offspring. Yes, but you just said it was popping off. It sounds like it's popping off, mate. I mean, does hey, it? Hey, hey. And now it's time for bed. But imagine if we'd stayed out and be like, yeah, do you know what? It's popping off in there. Let's go in there. And we've just walked into that. Good morning. It is another warm one. I'm to open my door because it's that hot. <coughs> I'm the only one awake at the minute. So do you know what? I'm going to catch the early bird. Zworm. Whatever this... I'm going to get up now. I'm going to have a shower. Because I, I just feel so dirty right now. Now, there is some payable showers here. That sounds pretty good. I think Raz has got a shower back at the van. That sounds pretty good. But I'm just going to stick with the old faithful because you know what? I just want to get up right now and just get clean. <sighs> got another good day today. Another day just full of headliners. But it doesn't start till a bit late for us. It doesn't start till about 5 o'clock. So let's find out what we're going to do today. Yesterday was one of the best first festival days I've ever had. I can't believe the calibre of talent that they've got at this fucking event. It's ridiculous. And I don't feel too hungover, so that means maybe some more wine today. We came to get a water, and annoyingly in this part of the festival, which is the campsite, it's based on tokens. So we've got to queue up and buy tokens to then exchange that for the water. Bit annoying, but hey ho, I've had a nice day so far. So I got us these 10 tokens. These were three, three euros each, and that should get us in the shower. And it should get us a drink as well. So is it one token per shower? It wasn't very clear, like, because they've got red tokens that are just one euro. Well, I think that might be the most expensive bottle of Barocca I'm ever going to have, so I'm going to make sure to savour it. Five quid. Five quid for this bottle of water, baby. Woo! And we brought the Barocca's ourselves. Three euros, one green token for getting here. It is the smallest shower I've been in, and there's not really anywhere to put your stuff, uh, which is a bit annoying, but we'll give it a whirl. You've got a limited amount of time, and we'll see how it goes. It's got a gap at the top to let the air out, which I'm a big fan of. Most of them are just little cubicles that kind of um, allow the heat to stay in, and it gets sweaty after us, and it's a pointless shower. That might be the best festival shower I've ever had. It's on a shower head, it comes off, you can put it wherever you want. Absolutely brilliant, really good. What a great start to the day. Lying, not hungover, washed, had a nice bottle of water. We'll wait for Dan to piss about because he's a little drama queen. And then when he's done fucking around with whatever he's doing, we can all have some breakfast. Possibly one of the best showers that I've ever had at a festival. And if you know me, I love a proper shower at a festival. None of that fucking washing at camp shit that don't get you proper clean. So we're walking back to the van just to check on a few things. It's uh, about 20 minutes out of the festival site. We found a vending machine. Does anyone want anything from the vending machine? Yeah, I'll have a bread, please. A bread, yeah. Which yeah. one? Groot Wit or Groot Wit or Volcorin? It smells brilliant. It does, yeah. Good Lord. Oh, it's warm. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. That's great. There's loads of bikes here. Like, shit loads of people are cycling to the festival, which I think is sick. Like, they've closed off the road, so everyone can walk down it or cycle down it. There's a big bike park where you can put all your bikes. 
really good, really nice, really like. I think I've made a big mistake. I went for the France baguette and it's got raisins in it. What the fuck, who puts those in a baguette? So it's another strange method of payment where you have to download an app and pay on the app. So we've had tokens, we've had contactless, we've had RFID. We've had too many ways of payment, put it like that. These convoluted payment methods when everyone's got just Apple Pay. So dumb. Just come on. Come on. Why the fuck's that not come out? That's what friends do. We pick the dry skin out of each other's heads. You shouldn't have any. This is why. Why are they? That's what you get for not washing your hair properly. It's not about not washing my hair. Right, it's not because my hair doesn't get washed. It's because my head burnt at Glastonbury. I had a uh, didn't put any sun cream in it. So yeah, make sure you put sun cream on your thing. Back in again, day two. Today we're gonna go check out the left side of the festival because we didn't really see it apart from the wine yesterday. Let's do that. Okay, let's do exactly that right now. This is the uh, Casa Bacardi. It's the one that you usually see at Red Inn and like Park Life, but it's off its tits. It's massive and it's fucking well loud. I really like this beat and Shazam can't help me. So if anyone knows what this is, comment below. I'll wait. My man's in here eating chicken wings while he's having a rave. Chicken, chicken wings. They're my favorite thing and I love to sing a song. I'm trying to have a vegan option at every festival, so I've come to Karma Kebab, and the guy who served us was awesome. Really good service. I got just vegan meat covered in chili sauce. Let's give it a whirl. That was really nice. I did ask for no salad, and it was full of salad. Great alternative to proper food. Right, I'm about halfway through these, and I'm getting dead full, but um, they are lovely. A little bit spicy, a bit barbecuey, pulled pork, very salad, very tasty, very nice. So here at the Live Nation stand, you come to this juggling thing where you're not juggling at all. You throw a juggling ball at the crowd, knock a crowd member over. Each crowd member gets knocked over. You get a scratch card, scratch it off, win a prize. Absolute landfill. Can't wait. Thank you. Spare no expense here, Live Nation. See the blue tape up here. Right, we're off into the silent disco. So these are some nice headphones provided by Bolt. Pretty ball coming over. Pretty girl gets a boy. Right, no matter what happens on this spin wheel, you're gonna win a bucket hat, which makes it a lot less desirable than the bucket hat Jake's got. Um, but you know, free's free, isn't it? Absolute landfill, can't wait. You've won a bucket hat! This is literally as far as it goes down on my head. I won a month of free energy with the company Bolt, but because we're from England, I don't get it. And for that, I should have then got a t-shirt where they were like, no, you can just have a free bucket out that everyone gets anyway. Or at least a Red Bull. Or at least a Red Bull. You know what? Bull. You know what? Stop complaining. You've got a bit of landfill. Be happy. You've come away with a bucket hat and my favorite, a lip balm. Right, folks, this part of the video is called Rob Keller shows you a bottle of Fanta. So I want you to imagine in your head what a bottle of Fanta looks like. And then on three, I'm gonna put it on the frame. One, two, three. If you said that's what a bottle of Fanta looks like, you're a fucking liar. What is he doing? I've just been to the uh, L'Oreal stand and it's all about providing help and support for women who are harassed in the street, which is so needed. Right then, it is to, I'm, I know how terrible I look, believe me. I don't want to look like this, but you can't win them all, just most of them. We're going to see our first big headliner of the day, and it's a band that I haven't seen in their current configuration, so I'm interested to see how it goes. I can't say the French word for good, can't say bien. <laughs>
someone that doesn't really listen to Kasabian that often. That was... I don't listen to him more. It's true, Dan doesn't listen I to him. I don't listen more. to him at all, but that was a fucking great That time. was great. I didn't really I mean, know. It might start. I don't really Probably know. Probably won't. I don't really know how to. Definitely not. Kasabian really just proved there that, in a nice way, that they really don't need Tom. And in a, in a way, they're kind of better without him. And I know that sounds bad, but he is the front man and he did a great job. I'm very tired now. Very tired. We watched this next band headline Isle of Wight Festival the other day and they were pretty boring. So I'm interested to see what they've got here. I'm, I'm surprised why they're built so low, considering they're a big headline act. You're a fucking idiot. That's pulp, not pub. Oh, different band. You're a fucking idiot. Once that lot, once that lot from Black Keys have finished having a piss and getting a drink, they're all going to run over here, and this is going to be absolutely rammed. <laughs> Flash has come on on its own. That's when you know it's the start of a good night. Look at my horse. My horse is amazing. So, God, I fucking hate Rosie. Really? I, you know what? Is it Prosecco? Every, every, no, I just got the Rosie. Rosie. But I hate all wine. Welcome to the Alchemist, sir. Can I address you in some bollocks? We're off to see the world's most forgiven nonce. We're off to see another headliner and Google it. I'm definitely right about that. Read his book. Ladies and gentlemen, time for headliner number whatever it says on the screen. <laughs> Red Hot Chili Peppers, thumbs up or thumbs down. I want to know, thumbs up or thumbs down. Lee said... Oh, he literally voiced the Wild Thorn. Thornberry's guy. No way, Donny. Red Hot Chili Peppers, once again, proving they are one of the most boring, like, I guess when you've had like a 30, 35 year career or however long they've had, you're going to have some bangers, but God forbid, everything is so boring. That's hey, guess not... what? They played the biggest banger, third song, so perfect, I love it. Absolutely, it's great for us. Cheer up, you got a beer. Why have we got a beer? Woo! 
Why have you got a beer? Why have, yeah, why have we got a beer? Because we're at a festival. The mad thing is, no, it was Dan who encouraged us to come here and get the beer. Yeah, and I've got a beer. Cheers, boys. Cheers. Yo, they said C3 Camp was dead. They said, oh, you got to be at the Hive. Welcome to C3 Camp, boys. Let's fucking rock and roll. Yeah, I love it when they skip the song midway through. Midway through the beginning. Knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. Right, are we done with this bollock yet? So it was a bit of rain yesterday, uh, but we had a great day. It's rained through the night, and the shower queue's too long, so I'm not going to shower this morning. But we are going to do something a little different today, and the aim is showing you what you could achieve if you came to Rotwurcher. There's no one on today that we want to see until 11.30. So come with us as we have a nice tourist day. Today's mission is going to be find as many novelty snacks and sweets and stuff that I possibly can to take back to England because I love foreign sweeties and stuff. Brussels. I am really flagging today. Maybe it was because... Uh, we do a festival every weekend and the fact that we did Glastow last weekend and I'm still shagged from that. Maybe it was the many, many beers that I had yesterday. Who knows? But I'm fucking shagged. God, get me to bed. And by bed, I mean, get me a beer again, I guess. Anthony Keedis would be happy with that, wouldn't he? Why, why has he got pants on? Why, why, why do you want him to take his pants off? He's a baby. No, but last time I saw him, he didn't have pants on. What the fuck do we do now? I'll tell you what we do. We have a good time. Let's go get a beer. What's the point? Because Raz can't drink. That sounds like a Raz problem. No, we're all in this together, as Miles Harris would once say. Should we go to Rock Yeah. That festival that we got to get to. Yeah. yeah. I suppose. Well, Brussels has been a city that I've been to now. And I'm not saying it was great. I'm not saying it was terrible. It's just somewhere I've been. I can tick it off the list now. Certainly better than just sitting back at camp, that's for sure. All right, rapid fire, because you and I both want to get back to the festival. Here's what I've treated myself to. Hopefully they will last me until we next come back to Belgium in like two weeks. Am I safe? As we walk back into sight, we can hear Machine Gun Kelly starting his set. And I'm really glad we don't have to sit through it because it's been fucking atrocious the last two times and every time it's ever performed because it is shite. <laughs> mother, mother. No, daddy. <laughs> no, you and Mother Teresa. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. I don't think you've won. And now you just had your wristband fucking cut. So this is the barn, and it's quite controversial this year because it's a 20,000 capacity venue or room with, it's got walls on, so you can't see what's going on inside it unless you're actually inside. They do have a big screen. They do have a screen, but they added that late and they added these crash barriers late as well because people was causing accidents trying to get in because they keep putting like massive bands on in here. Yeah, so they pop without the surges are in there and the crowd was literally out the doors. But they had the big thing on, the big screen and they had the speaker on it so you can hear it. So don't worry too much if you can't get in. Oh, this is sick. What? It's literally like a, a little arena. It's genuinely really impressed me. Like, this is something I was saying to Rob. Festivals need to try more and do more different shit. Put an arena in your own arena, you know? Look at this. That is cool. I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna have some oysters at a festival because why the fuck not? How are you getting fresh oysters here? I don't know how far it is. It might be dead easy. 
but I ain't had oysters at a festival before. I'm just waffling now. Absolutely fucking disgusting. Who is who wants that, especially at a festival? You've only got two more to have. <laughs> I can't be sick right now. You can't be sick in that bin. It literally tastes like you. You look sick, because then it was running back, back to me. Just was, it, was it quite salty? It's literally just like eating the sea. It's like having a muscle <laughs> that's still got seawater all over it. You're right, bud. Oh, God, I love the food fighters so much, man. <laughs> Hey, well done for having one. More man than I am. Only in that sense. Why is Dan really fine with him, I wonder? This has ruined my day. It's weird because you, normally you're putting stuff in other people's drinks. It's strange to see you do it to your own. They don't call me Jay Valley. Excuse me, I am a respectable gentleman. <laughs> yes, sir. This is a joke. This is a joke. In the campsite at C3, there's this tent that I'm sure you've was covered on the vlog earlier. But it, it has all of the potential to be a really good night out for the campsite. But it's just dead all the time, and even when we came back last night, it was dead as fuck. All it needs is like a lead mill style light, and maybe a DJ, and it'd be great. Why do they keep skipping it's the songs? Annoying, isn't like, it? literally, yeah. we were one minute into a song, yeah. they'll fucking skip it. We were getting hyped to Guns N' Roses last night. <laughs> we, we were getting hyped to Guns N' Roses last night. Um, uh, well, um, apparently, they, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't remember a second of that, but I know it happened. Just, you know you're going to be playing music in here, so just create a playlist. That you can play it all the way through. So we've got no red wine left. Don't know how they've sold out in a bar that's fucking empty. So we've got some white wines. Uh, the issue with the white wine is it's fucking awful. How much was that? Nine. Nine, Nine euro. euro. Utterly ridiculous. That's six euro for a pint with the cup. It's not even a pint, it's fucking 25 cent litres. God, no fucking wonder there's no cunts in here. Right, now we're off to watch my favourite band that I've seen the least. Normally with bands I love, I've seen them like 30 times, but this is my rarest favourite band. So we're gonna walk into the arena, probably gonna get some wine to be honest, and then we're gonna rock the fuck out. Am I right or am I right, Valley? God damn this fucking. Yeah, yeah, you're right, man. All right, we're back in, so we're gonna do a speed run. Hey. Wine, do what it piss, Wine. beer. Headline act, one of the best to ever do it. I don't know if I ever have or ever will go to a festival where I drink so much red wine. The red wine here is quite fucking nice, you know. Maso Antiso. That's nice, you know. Cheers. Chin chin. Cheers, Raz. Cheers, guys. Thank Raz for uh, trying something new. Yeah, well done, Raz. You know, they do say, like, oh, you can't drink coffee, you need to mature your palate. Welcome to wine, bitch. Headline set. 
Mafia, my favourite riff of all time, and I've only seen this band three times, or four now. What a great, what a great fucking show it's been. What do you think? What? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all set, I was waiting for that riff. I guess what a go. load of I guess fucking we gotta shit. Go, we gotta go back to camp and do that riff ourselves. Uh, that is so fucking annoying. That is bollocks, that isn't is it? truly... <sighs> Come on. We, the, the thing is, we don't even need to. We've had a great night tonight and we'll probably use this for the credits as well so thanks everyone for watching this week. Festival. We'll see you next week. <laughs> yeah, next week for some more God. nonsense. And I apologise to the campsite <laughs> and everyone that had to walk past it during that. But we love you all very much. Thank you for a great weekend, and we'll see you very soon. Good night. How you doing, my